Welcome in to episode five of Dropping Dimes. I'm your host, Matt Notes, and I'm joined all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, yes. <laughs> Longtime friend, Mateen Stewart. How are you? What up, man? How are you? I'm good. So how long are you going to stay in Detroit? I'll be here till, till Monday, uh, but hopefully I have to come back Sunday because I'm, I'm, I'm on hold for this uh, commercial. So hopefully, you know, but you know how that works. You, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You don't hold your breath for that, you know. Fuck no. Like, Fuck. I, you never get excited for shit like that. I was like, oh, okay, no. I'm on hold. Oh. Yeah, it means nothing. It yeah. is utterly meaningless. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, so I booked like a run of commercials. My average whiteness I get called to a lot of shit, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure just like you, I'm good in front of the camera, so it's easy. I get callbacks, not a problem. But over a year and a half period, I was on avails, which for those listening or watching, means basically it's beauty pageant rules. If the first person cannot do the job, then you are the runner up, and they'll call you. Yeah, uh, thirteen times in a year, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm sick of driving to all this shit and never booking anything anymore. So I stopped going. I stopped. I told my agent, I was like, I'm done with commercials. Yeah, because they don't, they don't, and it's not even that. They don't even give you your number, so you don't know if you're number one or you're number two or yeah. you're number three. So like, you just you 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 know, at first when it first happens, like, oh my god, I'm so excited. But like the disappointment of that is like, you know, telling your crush that you love her, and they'd be like, uh, maybe, you know, like. Well, see, my my agent used different verbiage. So mm. if I was on avails, it meant I was second or third. If I was on hold, I booked it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's always to be available. That's what they always yeah. tell me. My, yeah. Uh, uh, it's like available for the uh, the fitting. That's that's what I'm, I'm waiting on. So. Yeah, well, hopefully you get that call. And oh, yeah. uh, you book the job and it pays you, you know, handsomely. Yeah, I did. I did book the weakest link. They're bringing that back, so I'm gonna be on that. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's hosting? Jane Jane Lynch is hosting. Okay. I mean, I guess that fits if you're going for the same kind of mold. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I had no idea that they were bringing that. Who's putting that on? Uh, NBC. Because uh, I think what's happening is um, they are uh, they are um, they just want to do it because it's social distancing. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Because you could you could do a TV show in a social distance. So yeah, you could. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, you know, congrats on that, and hopefully the on hold you actually end up booking that and uh, change your life. Well, you know, then twenty twenty will be good. COVID, COVID, be damn. Shit, <laughs> the the days of a commercial changing your life are unfortunately long since past. Yeah, I mean it uh, can. It makes a difference. Yeah, but. When, you know, when I was at my height and I booked like six or seven in the course of a little over a year and I was like, this is the shit. And I was talking to a guy that's been here for another decade beyond. He's like, dude, if this is 10 years ago, you'd be sitting on. And he told me the figure of what he was making that time. I was like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah. That money is stupid. but It was already excellent money. Oh, shit. Mateen's. uh, There you are. He popped out for a second. Um have you been watching much uh, bubble basketball? I have been watching much a lot of bubble basketball. Um, I was I was one of the people that was like really into it coming back. Some yeah. of my my friends didn't want it to come back. Was like, oh man, just cancel the season. But I, I sort of knew they were. Uncom- I don't know. I just I don't know if they could do it safely. I was like, why not do it? Because there was like, it's not real basketball if it's if it's no fans. And I was like, dude, you're you have pros playing at a high level. It's real basketball. Yes. It's real basketball. They're playing real basketball. You don't, they're not replacement players. They're real. Exactly. Even those scrimmages were wildly entertaining. Mm-hmm. So that was just like a nice little uh, uh, collegiate AAU atmosphere. They're all having fun. You're like, wow, this is the preview of what's to come. And then last night's games like that, that Trailblazers Nets game, there was, there was actual genuine tension. I watched every fucking second of that. From tip to close, and I was like, "This game is awesome." And uh, the uh, the that steal was the moment, like that that steal. Oh yeah, Dame steal. That was the moment. Like I was it like, was. that was the moment. That Dude, was I tell you this much: all the Lakers need to do if the Blazers make it in is run pick and roll because if you can't stop pick and roll with Karis Levert and and Jarrett or anybody else that they're running or Joe Harris is torching you on pick and roll, it's like Jesus, or- guys. Or whoever. You don't even know who's on the Nets team. 
Like it's yeah. like, <laughs> Karis uh, yeah, Levert, I know. Joe Harris, Tyler Johnson, who was not in the NBA at all year, was was out there looking like like he was Kenny uh, Anderson in, in nineteen nineteen ninety two. They both, I mean, it went in the third quarter. They shot like sixty some odd percent. The uh -huh. Nets game, they were just hitting everything. You're like. Wow, the Blazers, and in that one, it started to go against them. And Gary Trent, you know, was missing every single shot that he was taking, and just like, wow, they can't get a bucket to fall. Is this where it slips away? And they ultimately, I mean, that last second shot by Karras, so I didn't know. I didn't know. It didn't look like a good shot. So, like, that doesn't feel good as a viewer if I'm a Nets fan. But at the same time, they've been hitting like fifty some odd percent of their shots. So that's a shot that he made. Game. That's a shot he was making last night, though. That's yeah. the thing. Like, you know, and, and Gary Trent hit a big three. Melo hit a big three. I, yeah. I sort of knew Dane was going to take their heart when he made that half court shot. God, it's just, I mean, at this point, he did one in the first half where he just kind of looked over at his defender and launches a 35 footer. And you're like, all right, he's feeling it tonight. You can't, you can't play defense against that. You can't, no, no, I don't care what you do. If a guy's coming past half court and he's making 35 foot shots, you can't you can't play defense against that. Well, they tried to do that double like this, not quite a full court press, but pick him up at half court to like, stop him on a two, you know, to trap him, and they're just like, all right, dump it into Nurk. Nurk, you need to make something happen, or you know, get it over to CJ or Mello. But uh, it, it, that's an interesting strategy. Try and take the ball out of his hands as early as possible. Yeah, they were running like a it was like a box and one kind of thing. It looked like. Uh, yeah, they were trying. I think there was a two-three zone at one point, and uh, they ran man to man. Like they were switching up. Might as well try and keep the Blazers confused. All right, so the playoff game. We'll start there. Portland and Memphis. It's a loaded question. Do you think Memphis has any shot? I, I don't think Memphis has a shot. Um, yeah. I mean, without Jaron Jackson, especially that's yeah. that's a big loss. And and Portland, if they were not injured. This year, I think they would be like a fourth or fifth seed uh, with with Nurkic. Yeah. So, I mean, Portland Portland is 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 scary because they are they are good, but their defense is kind of shitty. But I think <laughs> I, I think their offense uh, is gonna is gonna take over against Memphis, who's who has no experience really. They yeah. Memphis doesn't have an experienced guy on their team. They don't know what. And their their defense is shitty. There is no kind of. Yeah. Basically, if Portland wants to win any game, it's we need to score 140 and get them to score 136. Mm -hmm. and, and that's about, you know, their game plan because, you know, Lillard, McCollum, Mello, it, these are not defensive juggernauts. They no. can make plays, but it, it, they're not known for their lockdown defense. No, not at all. Uh, yeah. It's, it's if Memphis had Jaron Jackson Jr., this game would be super interesting to me. But, I just don't know unless Dylan Brooks is hitting, you know, a bunch of his shots. I don't know how Memphis manages to stay in this game because Portland just has too many weapons. Yeah, they have too much firepower. Like they were they were in the game and Melo had what eight, seven points, nine points last night, and they were still in the game. He had been averaging like twenty two the last three games. That's the thing. So it's like uh, the sixty one point uh, game from Dame the other day. McCollum had a bad game. But Melo poured in 26. Mm -hmm. So last night, CJ starts the game hot, ends well. Uh, but Melo has a cold game. That's the the benefit of having Melo is if CJ's off, there's a damn good chance that Melo won't be. And then if Gary Trent can get back to where he was in the first four or five games of the bubble, now you got three guys that can light you up from the three point line. And Nurkic, who looks completely healthy and back to you know mid season form, so they can score with damn near anybody. Yeah, he's not playing timid because, you, you, you know, coming off a catastrophic injury like that, sometimes you come back kind of timid. But he, yeah. he seems to be in his flow. And and I guess, you know, having five months off before you, you know, he wasn't even supposed to come back and then, you know, have this time. That's why I was thinking, like, is, would KD come back if the Nets, you know, keep moving on? He's, I mean, him and like uh, Clay Thompson at the end of the season. But once they got the delay of if they brought everybody back, the Warriors eventually came out and said, no, Clay is not playing. But he's technically, it's been long enough, and he would be healthy. Mm -hmm. Yet, once the Nets announced that KD wasn't coming back and then Kyrie was not going to play, it's, you know, what is, what's the point of the Nets even making it? But they have enough I mean, to make a play. They have, they have the record, so. Yeah, well, 
they, you know, there should only be six teams from the East really making <clears throat> the playoffs because the, the Nets and the the Magic. It, it's nice that you made it, but in no way are you gonna. And the you Wizards, know, don't forget it. Don't forget about the Wizards. The Wizards are there, aren't hey. they? They got a they got a W, so good for them. They didn't yeah. get fully swept. I thought that was just a fait accompli. I thought they were not going to win a single game, but uh, they got to play a Celtics team that did not play Tatum, Brown, uh, Gordon Hayward, Kemba Walker, Marcus Smart. So basically, anybody worth their salt, Daniel Theus, they didn't play a single second, and the Wizards got a W. Congratulations! But they didn't make the four games. There's no playoff in the East, right? There's no playoff. No, okay, no, no, right. no, that's. There's, there's no point. Yeah. Like legitimately. All right. So yeah, we both, it's not much of a discussion. I, I can't imagine anybody outside of diehard Memphis fans thinking that Memphis has a genuine shot. Yeah. If you're, yeah. I don't, I don't think that anybody thinks that all okay. the pundits are picking the Blazers for that. Do you want to start with the East or the West for the playoff picture? Let's start with the, let's start with the East. All right. So we'll start with the one eight bucks magic. I'll phrase it like this. Do you think the Magic can win? Let's put the over under at one game. I think this game goes six. Really? So you take the over. You think you're, they're going to get two wins I off of the Bucks? Yeah, they got that. They're in Orlando. You got to give them something. You got to give them an extra. They are playing. They're technically playing at home. So. Yeah, they are the only home team. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I don't know how often they stay at the Yacht Club or whichever the three hotels that uh, uh, Orlando is at specifically. I mean, I could see one. I think two is a stretch. I just They're so up and down. I don't know what the hell I'm going to get from the Magic when I watch them. Yeah, but I mean, the, the Bucks have been that way doing the, in the bubble. Um, you know, Giannis needs to stop fouling so much. Well. He, he fouls a lot. I mean, he is. I, I like his passion. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed the headbutt on Joe Wagner because, <laughs> by all accounts, Joe Wagner is a punk mm -hmm. and more than likely had this coming from somebody. And it wasn't even that bad in today's NBA. Yes, it is bad. But in the context of if you've watched this sport for long enough, like it was pretty timid. Yeah. I watched, I watched Robert Paris punch Bill Lambert in the face. Yeah. And it, I don't believe it wasn't he, a foul. It wasn't called a yeah, foul. He continued to play the game. Yeah. He didn't get kicked out of the game. It wasn't yeah. a technical foul. Yeah. I, I don't think either of us is one of those like, oh, the back in my day, the game was so, just like, look, the, the game has changed in that regard. Yeah. So to see somebody like, you know, rest his head against another and then just mm -hmm. butt him a uh -huh. little bit. It's not like he cocked his head back and slapped him in the nose with his forehead. Yeah. Uh, but I don't. Okay, so who's going to stop? What are you going to put? Aaron Gordon on Giannis? Like, who's stopping Giannis? Uh, I think they have uh, – what's the guy from USC play Giannis? No one's going to stop Giannis. But I think that, you know, they, you say one, I think they might get two. I just – that's just what I think. I just believe – I believe in the Orlando Disney magic. See, I think the Bucks are good to me at these early round matchups when they know that they are clearly the favorite – because they're good about – look at their point differential. They're good about getting up and maintaining a lead. Mm -hmm. So I think they can take that either. It's My question is later in the playoffs when they're facing a team that's more well-rounded and like has Toronto. more shooters. Like Toronto or the, the Celtics. Yeah. Either of the two of those, like that's going to be a hell of a series because they go much deeper to me, whereas you need Middleton. And then after Middleton, it's like, oh, hopefully George Hill can continue – his excellent shooting that he had throughout the regular season or Bledsoe steps up. There's well, a Brooke Lopez has been playing really well. Yeah. Too. But will that translate in the playoffs or were their second unit? Like the, the most damning thing to me is when they lost to the nets and it was their second unit against the nets, but that second unit has championship aspirations. Yeah. The nets second unit is like a, a fourth unit. It, yeah. It's a, you know, a G league, a G -League team. Yeah. Uh, and they they lost and just like okay well this second unit is supposed now granted they were rolling out like Marvin Williams was in that they just acquired Marvin Williams so he doesn't know the full scheme and everything else so Bootenholzer's trying to test drive what he's got at the end of his bench to see if he can use any of those guys during the playoffs but yeah Marvin, I if I, Marvin Williams he has stolen so much money from the NBA I know. so I know. much money a uh, hundred and seven eighteen million dollars of his career Dude, he's gonna make. 
he could make sixteen point five million dollars. Like I looked it up the other day. We were just looking at numbers, and I was like, Marvin Williams, the second pick, is still so much money, dude. Couldn't get run at UNC. Still got selected number two overall, and has never panned out as ten points a game. Near. Ten yeah. points a game. That's a late first round, early second round pick, yeah. and yet he's gotten paid. You know, hundred eighty million money. dollars. Yeah, over yeah. his career, <laughs> just a ridiculous amount. Good for him. Yeah, Make good what for you him. Can. Hey, it's, it, it helps to be tall. <laughs> yeah, it does. I think it's if you're um, if you're like a near a seven footer in the U.S., you have something like a twenty two percent chance of being in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Just because there's so few of them that. Yeah. I mean, look at like a, a Boban on Dallas. He's agile yeah. for his size, but he's huge. I mean, he's to huge. dunk, seven he has four, to go tippy toes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, can't teach height, but Martin Williams. Ugh. But all right, so. That one's a no-brainer. We're both picking the Bucks. Yeah, Bucks, Bucks. Yeah, you got Bucks in five. I got Bucks, Bucks in six. Okay. All right. The next one, Raptors, Nets. Raptors sweep. Okay, that one you're more because I think the Nets have more viable options to me. I like Karis Levert. But I think better than anything that the Magic for consistency outside of maybe Vucevic. Yeah. But, but I Karis mean, Levert is. I don't know. The Raptors are good. The Raptors, they play, they play defense. They make open shots. They, yes. And they make their free throws. And like when you talk about basketball, I know my coaches always say you make open shots, you play defense, and you make your free throws. Whoever make the most layups and the most free throws usually win the game. So um I I think the Raptors, they they got that, they got that that huspa, that 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 it factor because they know how to play with each other. They Won a championship last year. They're better yeah. this year than they were last year with Kawhi Leonard. Um, which, how did anybody know that? How is Nick Nurse not going to be coach of the year? But um, yeah, I don't think he's going to win it. No, he's not uh, going to win it. He should. He should. He should. So. Well, yeah. There's this year. There's a lot of genuinely deserving candidates for coach of the year. Mm -hmm. And in normal years, it's like ah, two, maybe three guys or something like that. But you can make a case, I think, this year legitimately for so many different people. Like, I like Billy Donovan as a potential. Yeah, Billy Donovan, Frank Vogel. People didn't think he was going to play and do what they did in LA. I know they got LeBron. I know they got AD. They got but LeBron still, and AD. Like, but still, like, he's he's been coaching well. Like, he's made some really good coaching decisions. That, that play that yeah. they drew up to, to win the game with Kyle Kuzma, that's yeah. a perfect play. That's the play you run. That's the perfect play to run. Like everyone should have known that that play was coming. But, um, but yeah. And then you have Bootenhoser and Nick Nurse. Um, who's some other guys that? Um, I Nate McMillan for the Pacers. I think he's done an excellent job given mm -hmm. how much fluctuation they've had within their roster. Spolstra to have the balls to to play heavy minutes on three rookies and to have faith in them. Like that's. Duncan yeah. Robinson. Oh Dude, my God. Him, Nunn, and Hero. Just like all three of these guys are killers. I love oh. all of them. I wish mm -hmm. they were on my team. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, in the East, I think there's a lot of deserving candidates. In the West, it's you know, your Vogels. You could say Mike Malone. I, I wouldn't fight you on that, but I don't think he's a genuinely deserving candidate. Um, and Doc's never gonna get it. No. He's uh, just, not. That team is so loaded that most people are going to ding you for that. But, all right, so I think the Nets could take one game. One? I think they could take right. a game. But, we, you like but, a, a, but we're going for Toronto, though. Toronto to win. Yeah. I I think any sane Nets fan would agree with us that Toronto – I think Toronto's got an excellent chance to make the championship. Yeah. I think they are a legitimate contender. Yeah. It, honestly, it comes down to late in game, they're going to dump the ball to Pascal – can Pascal get a bucket? Is he a true superstar? Mm -hmm. Or is he a guy who's excellent, but not that top tier, top 10 type of guy that this is the year I guess we'll find out. Yeah, because right now he's not in, he's not in the top 15. He's not in my top 15. No, yeah. but if he manages to carry the team through a series or two, that he elevates up. him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one after that is the biggest question mark uh, in that I don't know which team is going to come out 
which is Celtics Sixers. Who knows who's going to be playing for the Sixers? Yeah, because I mean, losing like if you tell me Ben Simmons and in the, Embiid's in the there, I'm going Sixers. But without Embiid and without uh, a healthy Embiid and without Ben Simmons, I don't think this. I don't think the Sixers have what it takes. Um, no. No, they don't. They just don't have the the manpower. They don't have the shooting. I mean, they're yeah. still what they went and got Jimmy Butler for last season is precisely what they need now this year. Yeah, yeah. it's it's when Elton Brand came out and said at the trade deadline, like this is the type of player we're looking for. It's like you just described Jimmy Butler, <laughs> but it's just, we need a playmaker who can also be a ball handler to alleviate some of the pressure from Bill uh, Simmons. So. Teams can't just key in on him and somebody else that can hit a shot late that's not, you know, afraid of the moment. And you're like, this is, Jim, you're just Jimmy describing Butler. Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Uh, but he caused friction within, you know, your organization. So he had to go and he you does, decided to he, give all that money to, to Tobias. That's fine. He does that. I mean, the Sixers yeah. year was last year. I mean, that, that shot that Kawhi made just took their heart because I felt like they had a chance to win a championship last year. Oh. Um, well, it would have gone to OT. I I would bet my life they win an OT because the entire they, Toronto team just kept deferring to Kawhi and was like, Kawhi, please do something. Everybody else is standing around watching him. Uh, yeah. Especially in that fourth. So you're telling me going into OT, he's going to have to continue to do that for the rest of OT? It's like, I don't know. That's asking a lot. It's asking a lot, bro. But yeah, I'm going, uh, I'm going Boston. I hate rooting for Boston, but I think Boston in five. I think Philly might get one. See, I like when Boston is playing like they should, I think they could make it to the championship. Yeah, they're another dark horse. Yeah. It, when Tatum and Brown are on, like when Brown scores 25 or more points, I think they're 13 and 0 now this season. But if he's if he's hitting those shots, that means then the defense can't like basically try and contain Tatum or you know, Kimba's knee. Is it gonna be healthy or not? Who knows? Yeah. Their biggest, you know, fault is uh, center at Theus, just because if if they make it out of the East, more than likely any team they play in the West is going to outside of the Clippers is going to have a dominant big that he's going to have to deal with. Yeah, and, I, and that's going to be problematic. Uh, yeah, I, I I like the the Celtics too. So you think a five game series? A five game series. I'll be kinder the Sixers. I'll say that goes six. You six six okay. I'll take six in that, but I still like the Celtics. Um, well, so far we're going chalk. We're taking all the favorites. This next, this next series is where it gets interesting. Yeah, Heat Pacers, which right now, technically home court is up for grabs tonight. Like oh. it, like it matters. It doesn't matter at this point for season. You get your virtual fans piped in. Yeah, and that's it. Um, which I heard Doris Burke talking about the other day. When are they going to have like virtual fans that are uh, behind? The, the rim and whatnot start doing weird shit to try and confuse free throw shooter, shooters oh, wow. and whatnot. Just like, yeah. that's a good idea. Why not at least try it? Yeah. Um, but Heat Pacers, are we, is TJ Warren going to continue his bubble goat dumb? Uh, which seems like fool's gold, but Oladipo's rounding into shape. You know, Brogdon. They, they miss Sabonis. If they had Sabonis, this is a hell of a series. Yeah, but Sabonis is coming out, right? Yeah, he's he's not going to be there. Um, I think there's a chance. He's got plantar fasciitis. I think there's a chance if they make it past the first round, Sabonis comes back. Oh. I'm not sure, but I, I read somewhere where there's a chance he can come back in the playoffs at some point, but I don't believe it's in the first round. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. TJ Warren is kind of an anomaly to me. He's He's what we call sugar or shit. Uh, so that's that's been him for his whole career. Uh, I mean, he, he's a good player, but, it, I mean, he, he doesn't scare you. You don't game plan for T.J. Warren. And he had some really big games. And I remember in January, February, him and Jimmy Butler got into it, and Jimmy Butler mm -hmm. was like, oh, there's, there's a dilemma here because I can guard him and he can't guard me. And so then – the other day when they played, T.J. Warren only had nine points, uh, and Jimmy Butler was guarding. Uh, so I, I, I think that Jimmy Butler is in his head, and he will have to break through that. If he doesn't play like he played in that stretch that he had, I don't think, I don't think Indiana has a chance, especially without Sabonis. Yeah, I, well, because Oladipo isn't 
hundred percent Oladipo mentally. It doesn't look like, you no. know, he's still trying to get himself back into full game speed and Brogdon's been great this season. Like he, he managed to even get better and take on like the, the responsibility of having to, uh, you know, command a team to a degree that I didn't know that he had. I mean, I liked him in Milwaukee, but he's proven to be a really excellent signing by them. He's earning that money. He's earning that paycheck. Yeah. You know, he's a 90, he's a 90, 50, 40 guy. I mean, there's not a lot of those guys out there. No. And he finishes well at the rim. And I also like some of the, I like a, a TJ McConnell with his old man game. Mm-hmm. It just, it full, it can fool defenses quite well. And if you're going up against a younger team, primarily outside of uh, Butler, but you know, Bam Robinson, hero, none, like it's a it's a fairly young team that's going to get a bunch of minutes. You yeah. still have your Olenics and and whatnot, but um, yeah, they're a young guys, team. Go ahead. They're a young team, yeah. Um, but I still like the Heat just because. Look, if TJ Warren doesn't go off, then do the do the Pacers have the offensive punch? Like, okay, Miles Turner may hit a couple threes. It's been interesting to watch him shoot threes, but for offensive, you know, uh, ability, you would want Sabonis. Yeah. He's, he's the X factor and the X factor is not there. So without him being there, you can't really, you can't really do much offensively in the post. Cause miles Turner is, is as big as he is. He's not a dominant presence in the post. He, he's no. a stretch four. that's, that's essentially what he is. He's a stretch four. And he doesn't have the versatility to get buckets, you know, uh, a little, you're not running think- plays for him. No, and well, and the other thing for Sabonis is he's kind of a Jokic Jr. They'll dump the ball into him, and then he surveys as guys cut around Mm -hmm. and will make a pass and whatnot and just creates more fluidity in their offense that Turner just doesn't do. Um, But Turner can give you a much greater defensive presence, but then you need to make up for that lack of offense, hopefully, like if you're the Pacers with T.J. Warren. Yeah. But the problem with T.J. Warren is, okay, he may go for – 35, but he's also going to get you one assist. And he's not going to play defense. <laughs> yeah, no defense. And he'll maybe get you a couple boards, but it's just going to be points and points only, and that's all he's going to offer up. It's basically Lou Williams. That's 6-6. Uh, that's six, six. Yeah, it, yeah. it's... I, I don't know. I need to see it in the playoffs before I buy into it, so it's kind of hard for me to pick against Jimmy Butler in the heat when I know Jimmy Butler is an asshole and will will fight. Yeah, he will fight. He's scrappy. He he comes from nothing. I got nothing. He played like he got nothing to lose. Did Did you see that uh, that game against OKC the other night? No, I didn't see it. So, Chris Paul's on uh, Duncan Robinson, and he steals the ball from Robinson. He's over in the corner, and as he's falling out of bounds, he whips the ball and hits like they were jawing at each other. But he whips the ball and hits him. Almost hits him in the face, but it hits him like collarbone, shoulder-ish. Comes Uh close, and it bounces off. And Robinson just is like, whatever, and walks down. So I think it was the next possession down. CP switches over to Butler, and Butler just flat-out trucks him. Just (laughs) drops him. Just bam, nails him with his shoulder as he's driving. CP goes down. The the ref calls the foul, and you can tell Jimmy was like, it's exactly what I wanted you to do. Here's the ball. (laughs) It just walks back the other way. Doesn't contest. It's like, yeah, yeah, I I intentionally fouled that dude. I like I like that though. I like that. I like that that grit. Me too. Yeah, I like that's old school basketball right there. I loved him on the Bulls. Like, yes, he's you know headstrong, but Jesus, if you're gonna have a guy lead a team, it's him. Him and the Heat make all the sense in the world given their culture. Yeah, I think he's a good fit there, and, I, and like we mentioned before, Philly's definitely going to miss him. Yeah, and now without Simmons, I mean, and it'll be what, yeah, and in B was his his ankle looks like it'll be fine come playoffs. But, but he's if yeah, he, I don't know, he's the kind of guy like if something like that happens, he's going to like milk it, like he's going to like. Oh yeah. yeah, well, you know, my ankle's hurting or I don't get this. You know, he's I don't know, he's kind of soft. I hate I hate saying that, but he is. Well, here's here's what uh uh Tripoli posed to me on a show last week. All right, you're the Sixers and you have to blow this up. Who do you pick? You pick Ben Simmons. It's it's, it's hard not to, but the thing is if Embiid would just get his conditioning and his diet and take care of himself he could be the best player in the league he could be easily yes he, he's, he has all the skills 
He could be a Keen Olajuwon if he wanted to be. He could, he could be, and that's the problem. He could be, whereas Simmons, like, I don't know if he's ever going to have a reliable shot because he doesn't have one now, and as much as you can't teach height, you can't teach elite shooting. No. Um, but Simmons but is, is always going to be Simmons, though, no matter what. He's going to be Simmons. But, but he's injury would, prone. He's injury prone, though, too. But you would need to surround him with excellent three-point shooters, and he can just run to the lane because there's so much spacing. Yeah. But Embiid clogs that up. So you're saying ship out Embiid, build around Simmons. If you ask me wh who, wh what would I do, that's what I would do. But I, I think I think that's like six in one hand, half a dozen in the other at this point with those two, the injury history. Because Embiid is also injury prone. They've both yes. missed seasons because of injuries. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Because some people contend that like the Sixers coddle Embiid too much. And allow him to get away with more than anybody else. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. I I choose him be just for the fact that he could be Elijah Wan. Yeah. On potential whereas, factor. Yeah. Whereas Simmons, like his best case scenario is a tall Jason Kidd. Yeah, because he's not going to be Magic Johnson. No. He just doesn't have the shooting prowess to be him. So it's just like, wow. You take a Hall of Famer, like one of the greatest centers of all time, or a point guard who is awesome and is a Hall of Famer in his own right. I'm not taking mm. anything from Jason Kidd, but of the two, I choose Akeem every time. Well, twice on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's a big fat. Is Embiid ever going to do that? Is it? But also, you can't call Ben Simmons uh, Jason Kidd because Jason Kidd could actually shoot the three pointer. I think he's like number eventually. Yeah. <laughs> By the time he got to the Mavs, but it was also like, did but anybody like, respect his shot at the net? Like, did like, anybody? He's like number two and three pointers made or number three. But that was like, dude, the first half or, or third of his career, you yeah. could back 10 feet off of him and be like, go ahead and shoot if you like. Yeah, We're but, not scared. But now he's, he's he, he made up for it, though. Oh, my, you know. my, my man, J Kid, it's so funny. We would always play these games like, who would be your top white? You know, NBA players was to be your team, and one of my friends was like Jason Kidd as point guard. And I was like, Jason Kidd is is half black and half white. He goes, you know, he's mixed. And he goes, well, they didn't mix it that hard, did they? <laughs> <laughs> it's like this dude from like Washington in the middle of nowhere is like, well, they didn't mix it that hard because I thought he was a white guy. <laughs> yeah, they didn't stir the paint enough on that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they, uh, not they sure. Mix, they didn't mix the, that hard. Yeah, the color match on that isn't quite uh, yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, by that notion, then potentially his starting uh, power forward is uh, Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, all right, so we're both saying heat at this point because six, you know, Pacers are a question mark. What do you think? Heat? I think Heat and six. I still heat. think the Pacers can give them a, a run. A heat and six, because Nate McMillan's a great coach. Oladipo can still have a couple games where he he's Oladipo, uh, probably early because when you, you know, as he's not used to playing as much, he'll he'll fatigue. So I'm yeah. going. I'm going Pacers. I'm, I'm going uh, Miami and six. Yeah, I agree with you on that. It's a if Oladipo can round out and actually suddenly just flips a switch and he's pure Oladipo, mm -hmm. they could win this series. Yeah. It's entirely possible because if Jimmy has a bad game, now you're relying on these young guys to pick up the slack. And they could do it, but that's also asking a lot of guys that don't have any playoff experience in the NBA. Yeah, because, you know, you have experience uh, with Indiana and then you have, you know, those guys. That, but also TJ Warren's never been to the playoffs either, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm still not – if I'm a Pacers fan, I would be hesitant to rely on T.J. Warren. It's like a – you know, it's a nice thing when he does go off, but I need Depot and Brogdon to do it. And then, T.J., if you could sprinkle in 25, that's awesome. That's only gravy on top of this. So that's all he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, so all he's going to do is just give you buckets. He just wants and the ball. Else. He just wants yep. the ball. He's a volume shooter. Yeah, he's a gunner. But mm -hmm. when you're making – 22 of 28, it's utterly amazing to watch. Yeah, that game he played against the Lakers, that's how yeah. he made it to the end. I was like, you can't guard that. No, you no can't just pure no. chutzpah yeah. of, I think I'm the best player out here right now. I'm, like, I'm, huh? I'm in a zone. You can't guard me. Uh, no, they couldn't. No. I mean, look, evidence is, it bears it out. Exactly. Uh, all right, switch over to the West. So, since West, the, West. 
the playoff or the play-in game, we're both taking Portland. It would be Lakers versus Portland in the first round, which I think everybody was pulling for once it looked like it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and the NBA is excited. If they couldn't have the Pelicans, they wanted Portland. Yes. Um, Nobody wanted to watch Phoenix. Although Phoenix would have been a nice story, but I think they're worst-case scenario. They, they won all the games, so they would have been a good story, but they were yeah. worst-case scenario. But... No, I mean, the NBA, as much as they love Ja and the young core there, Memphis is not going to bring the ratings. No. And Sacramento is not going to bring the ratings. San Antonio could, but nowhere to the degree that I think Portland with Dame. With Dame, Melo, Melo and LeBron, the yeah. class of 2003, and, um, you know, Kobe connection. Uh, I was at that game that they played after Kobe, the first game after Kobe died, and I saw Dame Lillard put on a fucking show. And... You know, that's one game. But he – I don't think – like, the, like the Lakers are very up and down, but they're still the number one seed. They mm -hmm. still have LeBron. They still have AD. And playoff LeBron is a different LeBron. And I don't see anybody beating Lakers seven – four times. I, I don't – I just don't see that, and especially not the Blazers. So I'm going Lakers in five. Okay, so the Lakers, it, they're so top-heavy. Mm -hmm. that is their Achilles heel of like, it doesn't matter who they're running out against. They have the two best players, or at the very least, if they're taking on the Clippers, they have two of the three best players mm -hmm. on the court at any given time. And in the Blazers is the same. But once you get past that top tier talent, I start taking blazer after blazer after blazer. So if you want to say LeBron and then that X is out, Dame, fine. And then AD... Pick whoever else. If you want to say CJ or you want to say Nurk, fine. And you still have that whichever of those two off the AD plus Mello. I like Gary Trent Jr. is basically doing what everybody assumed Danny Green would do in the bubble. And Danny Green has been atrocious so far. Oh, he's, he's shooting awful. Yeah. Um, now, they're going to miss like Rodney Hood if he was healthy for that second unit to run out for the extra scoring. Like once we get into the second unit, guys, yeah. But Lakers have a problem at point guard. Um, LeBron, LeBron is a point guard, man. Yeah, uh, okay. LeBron James is the point guard. Okay, but who's the guard that's gonna d up Lillard? Uh, LeBron James, man. Put LeBron on Lillard, bro. LeBron. So you're gonna have a 35 year old that has to run the offense because when he's off the court, their offense falls off a fucking cliff. Oh, they do. It does. It does. Oh, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it is bad. bad. They can't get a three point shot when he's not on the court, like an so, open three point shot. That's and this is where. And a lot of people was talking shit. Well, mostly Pap because Pap is like a LeBron apologist. He, LeBron can do no wrong in his eyes. It was like, it was like the Lakers kind of need Avery Bradley. Like Avery they Bradley definitely a, need Avery Bradley is a big like loss. He's an on the ball defender. He's a three and D guy. But maybe KCP shows up and guards Bullshit. Shane Lillard. Bullshit. That's that is their problem. Their wing defense of okay, that's fine. Put put LeBron on Dame. Although I don't think Vogel will do that because we need LeBron to to general to be the general of our offense, and we can't expend his energy on defense. But let's just say they do that. Fine. Who's shutting down C.J. McCollum? Caruso, KCP, KCP, Danny Green. He's a three and D guy. He's supposed to be that guy, but he hasn't. Um, you know, De Deion Waiters is not playing defense. No, but, but like it. The cream rise to the top, Matt, though. So, like, LeBron and AD is prolific. Now. Yes, so, yeah, they're so, awesome. Yeah. So I'm I not think, taking it away. I think, I, think, I think that they'll they'll find a way to figure it out. And Deion Whiters has been playing well. He's been playing well. You know, he's still getting in his groove. I like I like Deion, but, like, Deion is one of those TJ Warren sugar shit guys. Like, Yeah, but unfortunately, the sugar on that tastes like shit to me. <laughs> So that's diabetic sugar. If I've ever tasted it, I don't, I have never been a Dion waiters fan. I think it, the guy is all hubris and every once and again, he'll give you 18, but it's the ego I think is detrimental to a team. Yeah. I, 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 my favorite Dion waiters quote, quote was like, I'd rather, I'd rather go Oh, for 30 than Oh, for nine. Because if I went Oh, for nine, that means I only took nine shots. <laughs> exactly. And I've already seen him get frustrated when he feels he's open and LeBron or AD shoot the ball. And you're like, dude, you're not even third option. Like if Kuzma's out there, he gets the ball before you. And, and that's, the, that's the factor, though. 
The Lakers cannot win the championship if Kyle Kuzma does not play like he played the other day. Well, yeah, his offense so far has been pretty damn. He's the only one that's consistently ma- nailing threes for them right now. Uh-huh. And if he keeps that up, then yeah, then he maintains their spacing and they're going to be a tough out. But if he even in if Peters a little bit and he goes down to say 32%, 33% from three, as opposed to the upper thirties, low forties, I, I don't know where they're going to get the extra offensive punch. Yeah. Uh, Danny Green has to show up. Maybe he'll, yeah, flat he'll, out. He just has to show up. That's what he's supposed. That's what they got him there for. He, I mean, he's supposed to make the three corner threes. He's supposed to be one of the best ever. He, the other day, he, the first game, he was like zero for eight from three. I'm like, you can't. Danny Green can't go for zero for eight. Oh yeah, yeah. I brought it up on the show now a couple times, but after every Laker game, it is a roast fest of Danny Green from Lakers Twitter. Yeah, I mean, it is every game. It's this this fucking guy, this and blah 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 blah. And you're like, wow, man, their knives are out for Danny Green every game. So I. Does that get in his head? I don't even know at this point. Yeah, I hope not. But I All got right. the Lakers. Lakers in five, you said? I had Lakers in five. I think I think Portland could take two. I think they could even maybe push them to seven, but I'll say Lakers in six. Okay. We got the Lakers. What's the next, yeah. next series? Next one is Clips Mavs. Mm. I, I wish the Mavs had Powell because then they'd have their full team. Uh... This team is so much fun to watch. It is. Powell. Who's Powell? Powell, Powell. Uh, is there a power forward slash center kind of okay. big man that, that ruptured his uh, Achilles I got back you. in okay. January, February, something like okay. that? I got you. Um, so, like, Kleba is kind of filling in for a lot of his minutes. Maxi Kleba. Yeah, type of thing. Um, but outside of that, they got the rest of their squad, and then – Montrez will be back, should be back by the start of that series, although he hasn't played. Uh, but it is hard to pick against the Clippers. It is. But I'm about to shock the world, bro. I'm going, I'm going Mavs in seven, bro. Mavs in seven? Oh, yeah. I hate the Clippers so much. I can't pick the Clippers. <laughs> I hate the Clippers so much. I'm, I'm believing in this Luka Doncic. I'm believing in the Luka Magic, Matt. I want to. I love watching Luca and then Luca and Porzingis. It's a great two man game. Yeah. And if they ran pick and roll, like I, I don't know what exactly you do for the average team against that. That's uh, a lethal. They both can shoot from anywhere, and they both can finish at the rim. It's like this is this is brutal. And I'm going and, against basketball logic when I say that. Well, it's just the depth of the Clippers. Once you get past Luca Porzingis. It's like you're asking an awful lot of Seth Curry and Tim Hardaway Jr. and Maxi Kleba and Boban and J.J. Barea and Dorian well, Finney-Smith. Yeah. I'm going against basketball logic because you you usually don't pick the team with with, with, the, with the most white guys on it. That's just – that's <laughs> you usually don't. You don't pick that team ever. That's just basketball logic. And you might be like, I don't know why that's a thing. I do know. But I, like, I'm, but I, they got three white guys that start. I'm Listen, the, the reason that more than likely that Doncic didn't, didn't get taken number one overall is because nobody wanted to believe that this dude that was the MVP of EuroLeague at 19 is going to translate in the NBA because he's white. And, that's, and I blame Darko Milicic. Okay. It yeah. could be. As a Pistons mm-hmm. fan, I'm sure that's a little bit saltier in your mouth. Oh, it's still salty. Yeah. yeah. Darko Milicic with his fucking farm now, wherever he did. But yeah, that's why. If he was like if, if he had, if Luca had was Luca and he played for Duke, yeah, easy. Well, yeah, but what about Dirk? Dirk's a white guy that came in, won a championship, was an all timer. I, I know, but then that that was like way before. Before Dirk also went like what eleventh, twelfth. Yeah, I yeah. think it might even been fifteenth. Yeah, like it was late. It was yeah. mid mid first round. He wasn't like up there. Like like oh, Dar- Darko was number two. We took we took Darko. Over Carmelo, Chris Bosch, Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Uh, well, so Melo wouldn't have fit on your team. No, Bosch would have. Yes, Bosch would have. And actually, Wade would have as well. Yeah. Uh, but Melo, it's like, you already got Rip and you got Tayshawn. Where are you going to find minutes for Melo in this mix? Yeah, Bosch would have. Wade would have Wade worked too. Yeah. 
It's not that it gets mellow. It's just a, yeah, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So you, you're saying Mavs in what, seven? I'm saying Mavs in seven. I say they shocked the world because, first off, I hate the Clippers, and I'm rooting for the Mavs. I know it's not uh, logical, but I'm I'm just going with my heart. Yeah, I, I'm indifferent to the Clippers. I, I, lo- I love certain of their players. Like, I love Pat Beverly. As much as he jaws, I am a fan. Whereas the PG talking shit to Dame, it's like, dude, Dame, Dame buried a 43-footer in your eye. In you your don't face. get to talk. Yeah. It's like, no. Yeah, you don't get to talk until you do the same to him. Especially if he wasn't talking to you. Yeah. And then, it's yeah, it's all directed at Westbrook. Mm-hmm. And then Marcus Morris on top of that, be like, dude, you were on the Knicks, one of the worst teams I've seen in years, and you're going to come in here talking shit? Like, you were their their prime, number one option, and they were dog shit. Yes, yeah. you're a good player, but you're not a dude that should be running his mouth. You've played on 10 teams, Marcus Morris. You and your yes. brother have both played on 10 teams. It's, But, uh, dude, it's still... Kawhi, PG, Lou Will, Montrez, Harold. Like, this team is so stacked. They're stacked. I know they're stacked. Jamichael Green, Landry Shamit, Zubach. Like, it's nonstop. Pat Patterson. No, I hate Patrick Patterson. But, but he can give you a little bit of run when you need him to. Yeah, he'll, he'll make an open three. Exactly. Um, that team is so deep. I just, I like them to win the championship. Yeah, a lot of people do. But I wish nothing but ill will against the Clippers organization. <laughs> Fuck the Clippers. <laughs> Just fucking salt the fields, man. You guys yeah. are never growing shit here again. No, Fuck you. Ever, yeah. Fuck the Clippers. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take, uh, I could take Clippers in five. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I hope you're I, wrong, Matt. I hope you're wrong. Look, I, I, I would love to see the Mavs. I did the, the way, way back when on the Western conference preview at the start of this season. I was like, Mavs are making the playoffs, and I caught a lot of shit for that. Just like, dude, Luca is awesome, and Porzingis is going to be amazing next to him. This is going to be the shit. Uh, I would love to see him go off. I, you know, that team is so much fun to watch. All right, so two matchups left: Nuggets versus Jazz, three six in the West. Uh, I got the I got the Nuggets winning in 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 six games. Um, man. The Jazz would have a legit shot if Bogdanovich was there. Yes, true. Um, but I think now that the Mavs, it looks like they're going to give Porter, or pardon me, the Nuggets uh, are going to give Porter some real run. Run. Let the let let's take them. Let's take the straps off. Let's let him go. The dude, he's good. He's really it, good. I adore watching him play a two game, uh, two man game with Jokic. Yeah. Which actually, uh, on your friend's team, Porter might now supplant Blake Griffin for his starting four. (laughs) Uh, Dude, that guy, gorgeous stroke, can shoot from anywhere, finishes at the rim. He's what, 6'7", 6'8", something like Mm -hmm. that, but just moves effortlessly. Hopefully his back is is fine. Yeah. 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 And you know he was good. Because he played three games in college. You know he was good. And for him to get drafted that high... Well, he still dropped to 13th or something, 14th. The Clippers yeah. could have had him. They had two yeah. back-to-back picks. And they, didn't. and they took Shea Gilgis, and uh, I can't remember who took the with the other one, but it's like you could have had him because there's no there's no uh, urgency to take a dude that you need to start right now with these back-to-back picks. Yeah. So why not take a chance on? Because the shot. average yeah, average mid-round guy ends up being like a solid rotational player in – the first round mm-hmm. you know there's more they, busts at the top than there are in the middle yeah the middle you're going to get more solid guys but every once again you get like a devin booker yeah at 13 like that does happen or donovan mitchell i think was 13 as well yes the pistons didn't pick him at 12 they took uh luke canard they did not listen to logic <laughs> uh, <laughs> well you know luke's the solid ish player oh <laughs> okay, Matt. Yeah, 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 trust me. You could you could do this every year, though. Yes, you can. You can. I mean, look at all the teams that passed over Giannis before he went to the Bucks. Yeah, he was fifteen. Yeah, and and 
even at that point, it felt like a stretch, uh, according to all the pundits of like, this dude was a couple of years away from making an impact. But once he did. Yeah, this kid is raw. He was raw, raw talent. Um, But yeah, so I think as uh, like basically the guard play of the Nuggets goes, so go the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. So if Murray and Harris play well, then the Nuggets, I think, are unbeatable in this series. Yeah, and I think this is one of the best matchups in the whole playoffs in the first round. This one and uh, possibly the next one. The next yeah. one's going to be pretty stacked, too, with yeah. you know Westbrook being out. Yeah. Oh, that, uh, The next one's much, m- m- uh, was must-see TV, the next one. This is like, ooh, this is like the NBA. It's like, ooh, this is what they yeah. want it. Well, NBA fans are like, oh, no, average person doesn't know much about the Nuggets or the Jazz. They don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, whereas it's like, yeah, we're doing the, wow, can you imagine if Bogdanovich was here? This thing would go seven. It'd be amazing. And if they were like, who is Bogdanovich? <laughs> uh, yeah, this this Eastern European that just shoots lights out. That's who mm-hmm. that is. Mm-hmm. And you pair them with uh, an Australian that can get hot in and of himself. And then uh, a French guy that had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, well, that and then, like, Jordan Clarkson is the perfect six man for this team. I wish the Lakers had him right now. <laughs> yeah, it would mm. scoring off the bench like that, it would yeah. be excellent. Or well, his braids, he, he like, he'd take it to the next level. Well, but I think when you watch them, though, he's got to close games now because they don't have Bogdanovich. So they've yeah. got a small lineup out there to close mm-hmm. now with Clarkson. But there have been points during the bubble, and I watched them where they everybody just keeps feeding him the ball because no matter what, Clarkson feels he can get a bucket at all times. Yeah, he can score. He's instant offense. Um, but man, having him to close out to be one of your reliable guys, not saying he couldn't do it, but we've just never really seen him do it. Yeah, uh, he never had to. Yeah, but I just now with Porter playing as well as he has, and if Jamal looks remotely like Jamal, I just don't know how they beat. The Nuggets. No, I think the Nuggets take this one. I think it's six. Uh, that sounds about right. I still think Utah is legit, and Jokic is going to have a problem with Gobert just because Gobert is Gobert. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after that, it's like, well, you know, who's going to stop? Who's going to stop Michael Porter Jr. here? Yeah, especially if he's playing like he's been playing. Sixteen yeah. points more per game in the bubble. Oh, it's he's looked it too, man. That two seriously, that two man game. When it's just him and Jokic, and he just keeps running around, and Jokic just keeps kind of pass faking until he finds a seam and then boom, hits him on it and just goes for a layup. Yeah. Yeah. He's six seven going up against guys that are six four, six five, and he's so much more athletic. It's like, what are you what are you gonna do? Good luck to yeah. you. Uh all right. So that one in six, and then the final one. The final one. Here we go. Rockets Thunder and no Westbrook to at least open. I'm not sure how much he's gonna miss. With that quad injury, uh, quads are tough. They are tough, and it's basically well rest and treatment. Oh. But D'Antoni's like he, he might be back for the first game, but we're going to see treatment go how treatment goes, and just it doesn't. All indications are he's going to be out for the at least the first game. Okay, ready, ready for this one. Go, Thunder and seven. Oh, <laughs> I got the Thunder and seven. <sighs> I might join you on that. <laughs> Chris Paul, Chris Paul, I don't know. I don't know what it is about him, but I believe in I believe in Chris Paul right now. Well, I think this year's the anomaly for Chris Paul because there was a quote from Brad Stevens when the Celtics played OKC and he's he said that in essence, Chris Paul dictated the entire tone of the gym because there's no crowd noise to drown him out. So he was just so much louder than both teams that it got in the Celtics' head. Yeah, he's controlling everything. Yes. Bro. Yeah. And this could be the year that finally that gives him the, his his floor generalship shines because there's no outside interference and he can just dictate terms. Plus, the lack of size on Houston and if they don't shoot 23 of 50 from three, they, they have no shot. Yeah. So they need to they, do that four times. They live by the three, and they will die by the three. That yeah, is, like, prototypical. As much as Austin Rivers went off for, what was it, 41? Yeah. He's not going to give well, you that. Yeah. That's no, a, that's, that's a bunch anomaly. of bullshit. Yeah. 
Yeah. I've watched him in too many Clipper games to believe that Austin Rivers could do that in any moment that is worth a shit. Yeah. Uh, so watching him live, he is one of the worst professional guards I've ever seen consistently, just over and over. Like and his dad saved his career. Oh, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Look, look, has he turned into a solid rotational player for Houston? Sure. He's an but, NBA player, but he's not like yeah. star like we thought he was going coming out of Duke. Yeah, it's I so with Westbrook out, it's like you need offensive production from who exactly? Uh, Eric Gordon's not been shooting it particularly well. Nope, he's hurt. Yeah, PJ Tucker is 38 years old. <laughs> yeah, great shoe game, <laughs> shoots the corner three. Outside of that, it's like, dude, he's going to be dominated on the inside. Yeah, by Steven Adams and shit, Gallinari probably eat his lunch a little bit here and there. And then you got the former team, Chris, Chris Paul going against his former team. You got Shea Georges Alexander playing well. Uh, I think I think the Thunder take this in seven and shock the world. Yeah, I, I would love to see that. Because then it also, you want to talk about a team, what do they do? What does Houston do? They're cap strung. Their best move is to get rid of Harden, is to move Harden and get as many assets as they possibly can back. Yeah. And do yeah. they have the balls to do that? To do Probably not. I don't think so. No, they don't. Um. Yeah, but it's a, it's conceivable, man. It is entirely because con- at, at that point the Rockets need Covington to get you twenty two to twenty four and play excellent defense, which he can do. But for seven games, yeah, because if he's your best defender, he's going against your the best offensive guy. It's going to be hard for him to to generate that much offensive prowess. Yeah, Cause because you're not you're running not- plays for Robert Covington. No. He's it's he's there for kick out options on threes and clean and, up on the offensive boards. And scrappies, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, that team is a whole bunch of well, Harden could get you sick. I mean, not Harden, but uh uh, uh pardon me, yeah, Harden could get you sixty, but it's just like, well, okay, well, who else is gonna get me something? Yeah, but also in this new defensive thing, you know, sometimes he's been getting it caught on the big and he's been in foul trouble. This whole bubble, he's been in foul trouble. <laughs> yeah, it'll be Without Westbrook, because when Westbrook is, you know, look, if he comes back in game two, then I think that could entirely shift the dynamic. But it takes, if it takes until game three to come okay. back or maybe game four, what if it game four, then what's, what happens if OKC is up 2 1 at that point? Yeah. Um, yeah. The momentum might already be against them. Yeah. They won't have nothing to, to, to no, nothing left in their system. Uh, yeah. That, that series is going to be so good to watch. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait. I love playoff basketball. There's not a lot of things better than playoff basketball. I know, but thankfully I'm work from home doing, you know, stuff like this. So yeah. I've had the opportunity to watch a ton of this bubble. And now starting Monday, it's just like, boom, I, I got, we have basketball every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. Every day. Again. day. Yeah. Oh, it is awesome. I just, this is, and this is on TV. Yeah. In the yeah. summer, usually I'm stuck watching baseball right now. And, and you know what I love? I, I I brought it up on uh, my last show. I love that uh, for the first time ever, white guys are going to have a tan in the playoffs because they have I know, a lot of right? time off. They it never happens. Time. Like uh, no, uh, it never happens. Yeah, uh, Nurkic last night. You could tell he had sunburn on his neck. Like, <laughs> dude, usually they're pasty as shit in the playoffs, yeah. and that's playoff basketball. It's just like, dude, Rubio's got a gorgeous tan right now. It's such a weird atmosphere and environment, but every day this is awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. I can't wait, man. Yeah, I'm hoping Memphis wins tomorrow just because then we get another game on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> then we don't have to have any days off on these More basketball. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, you can just follow me at Mateen Stewart, and I have a great podcast that I have called Like a Virgin Podcast. It's available everywhere. So, yeah, thank you for having me. No problem, man. Uh, stay safe in uh, Detroit. And I guess you'll be back in town roughly on uh, Sunday or Monday, but it, yeah. I won't see you, but, you know, safe trip back. All right, man. I'll take it easy. Uh, all right. Well, follow Mateen anywhere um, at Mateen Stewart. And does it make a difference that uh, the M and the S are capitalized or can they put in the lowercase? Do you know? Not at all. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. So at Mateen Stewart, uh, hit him up, follow him. Um, and check out Like a Virgin is podcast. Thank you, everybody, for uh, watching and listening to this week's Dropping Dimes. Uh, you can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost, and that is it. 
We will see you guys next Wednesday with uh, my guest, Mark Ellis, and I look forward to you then. Adios. We'll be right back.